Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this video, I am going to be going over the projects of the artists that were selected in my 15,000 subscriber thank you video. One of the artists is doing a leather project, and I have been getting a lot of questions about leather lately, so that is going to be on a separate video. If you have any questions pertaining to pyography on leather, put it in the comments and I will try to address that as I'm working on that other video. There are a couple things I want to mention before we get started. First, the suggestions are just my ideas and you may or may not agree with them. Incorporate the stuff you like, ignore the stuff you don't. It's your artwork, so customize it to your preferences. The other thing I want to mention is if you would like to see more content like this, leave a comment and let me know. Maybe it can become a regular feature on my channel, like every 5,000 subscribers or a yearly event or something like that. Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Well, let's get started on the projects. Dana, your ornament looks great. There isn't much I can recommend except a little fine tuning. The first thing I would do is darken up the little spots between the prongs on the ornament caps. Then re-burn over the little ornaments, including their caps, to darken them up. But don't re-burn over the largest light reflection. Leave that alone. You want that to become the palest spot on the ornaments. I circled that area in green on the inset photo. As you're working, do your best to avoid burning over the hanging cord for the large ornament. I would recommend keeping the heat on a lower setting so that you can work slowly to build up the color. Also, try to create smooth transitions between the reflected light and the darker areas on the ornament. The darker areas should be several shades darker than the reflected light areas. Lightly burn in the three depressions near the top of the large ornament. Then re-burn to add shadows along the right edge of each depression. You did not include any questions with your email, so all I can do is suggest items to fine-tune your ornament so that it will look closer to what I did. Keep in mind that my work isn't perfect, so you may not agree with or like everything that I suggest. And that's okay, this is your artwork. Make it yours. For lack of a better term, I'm going to refer to these little nodules on this row as knobs. Begin by darkening up the line between each knob. Also, darken the lower right corner of each knob that is found to the left of the knob that the green arrow was pointing at. When you get to the knob that the green arrow was pointing at, then stop darkening the right edge. Instead, just darken the line between the knobs if it needs to be. Then if you want, add the dark dot along the top of the right group of knobs. This dot can also be omitted, and it will look just fine. And maybe it will look better. With these large ribs in the middle of the ornament, the reflected light should fill the entire triangular shape. I am using a white colored pencil to illustrate this. What you need to do is very gently scrape away the burn marks with the edge of a knife or a piece of thin metal. It's your choice if you want to add the upper reflection on these two ribs. You did not tell me what material you are burning on, so I'm going to assume it's plywood. When you scrape, be careful. The top layer of plywood is not very thick, and if you scrape too much or too vigorously, you will remove that top layer and you will be in the glue layer underneath. Then I recommend darkening up the ribs, especially the shadows. The shadow should be on the right edge of the ribs to the left of the green arrow. The rib that the green arrow is pointing at, and all of the ribs to the right of it, 
should have shadows along the left edge. These shadows are what make the ribs look 3D. Again, I want to reiterate that your ornament looks good. Since you didn't provide any questions or concerns, all I am doing is making suggestions to make your ornament look more like mine. You may have noticed other things have been done on the ornament. Don't worry, I will get to what I did. Right now, we're just going to concentrate on the ribs. We want to darken them up so they look more 3D and so that the reflected light stands out more. Concentrate the color near the seams. That's where two ribs touch. The seam should be the darkest spot and the shadow should get gradually lighter from there. Another thing that can help is to align the top and bottom edges of the reflected light so that they are in a line, but the lines do not need to be perfectly straight. To do this, draw a line with a pencil and burn over any parts of the reflected light that stick above the upper line and below the lower line. Don't make it crisp edges though. Keep the transitions from light to dark soft and gradual. The upper right edge on the large ribs should be lighter in color than the left edge. You can either scrape away color from that right edge or darken the left edge of the adjacent rib. If you choose to remove color, then use the edge of a sharp knife to gently scrape away the darker color. You do not need to remove all of the color. Just remove enough to lighten it a shade or two. If you remove too much color, lightly burn over the area to add a little color back. With the lowest part of the ornament, I'd add a triangular shadow to the area. This will make the area look like it's curved inward versus a cone with straight edges. The edges of this area should be lighter than the center. In that regard, I did not do a good job coloring this in. Lastly, I would darken the shadows on the row of knobs near the bottom of the ornament. Concentrate on the shadows that are below the knobs and the shadows that are at the top of the knobs. By darkening up the shadows, it will help these knobs look 3D. After you're done with the ornaments, step back and look at your artwork. If you feel everything looks great, you're done. If you feel like the ornaments do not stand out enough, then simply darken up the background. Well, that's it. I hope I covered everything you were after. Here is a comparison of your artwork and your artwork with the changes that I made. Hi, Cheryl. Your project is off to a great start. I love the image that you're working with. You stated that your main concern was the trees. I would use a scribbly circular motion type of burn stroke to create them. Draw a line to represent the tree trunk, then start scribbling in a random and circular type of motion to add the foliage. Now I personally like to start at the top of the tree and work my way down to the bottom, but that's really just a personal preference. As I mentioned in the email, I do have a video that goes over creating evergreen trees in more detail than I'm going to do here, and in that video I'm actually wood burning them versus drawing them. I will put a link to that video in the description below. With the trees that you've already burned in, I would re-burn over them using that same squiggly circular motion burn stroke that I used to create those two smaller trees in the foreground. Don't worry about the other things I've done on the printout. I will cover those soon. As you work on the trees, there are a couple of things I would recommend. First, create the trees in the foreground before you do background trees. Foreground trees are trees that you can see in their entirety. Second, use the reference photo as a guideline. So relax. Quit trying to capture every little detail that's on your reference photo. Instead, just worry about creating the texture on the trees. 
Don't worry about trying to make them look identical to the reference photo. The recipients of your artwork are not going to compare it with the reference photo. And third, the trees are not the focal point. Instead, they are framing the focal point. I will talk more about this later on. What I do want to mention now is that the light source is coming from the left. I like to put a physical reminder of that light source. Sometimes I draw it in with a pencil on the board. Other times I will stick a piece of paper on the board to represent the light source. With that light source in mind, don't be afraid to reburn over your trees and create your own shadows. The shadows would be found on the right side of the trees because they are further away from the light source. You can also darken up the underside of branches here and there. This is an optional step. You need to do what will make you feel comfortable with your trees. But keep in mind, the viewer is going to see the trees, but they will not spend a lot of time concentrating on the trees. Instead, they're going to be looking at your mountain. Since you are burning on a solid piece of wood, you have a lot more leeway to fix things. Something I'd recommend is reducing how dark these shadows are in this lower left corner and the tree trunks. I would use the edge of a knife or some other item made out of thin metal that you can use to gently scrape away some of the color. After the color has been reduced, I would reburn over the area and put trees in there. Here's your reference photo. This area I circled is your focal point. This is the area you want the most detail and the highest level of contrast. When you work on the mountain, don't be afraid to add some darker burn strokes. I like to use single lines and zigzags that are burned in the direction of the mountain slope. Now keep in mind my zigzags are shaped more like bolts of lightning. I reburn on the shadowed side to build up the color and make it look darker. This demo up here at the top of the board shows how I angle the burn marks in the slope direction. This gives the slope its pointy shape and it creates tonal variety. I have a couple of tutorials that explain how to create mountains. One is really old and a bit horrendous in some aspects. But it does contain a section on shaping a mountain that I think is useful. I'll put links to both videos in the description below. Back to your mountain. To make the snow look white is going to require contrast, high contrast. To do this, the rocks need to be dark in color. I would recommend keeping them in the brown tonal range. Stay out of the tan range, that's just too pale. Medium to dark browns will work well. In the shadows, you can use some black tones, but don't go overboard, otherwise you'll lose fine details. Another thing that I highly recommend you do is burn in the sky. This will also add some contrast with the snow, and that will help that snow look white. Your snow is going to need some shadows on it in places. Those shadows should be in the tan color range. So the sky needs to be darker than the shadows on your snow. I would make the sky two to three shades darker than the shadows on your snow. Remember the focal point is in the center here, circled in green. What you don't want is to create a high contrast area that would compete with your focal point. So lightly burn over all of that snow that's behind and to the left of the trees. Well, that's it. I hope I covered everything you were after and a little extra, and I hope the information's helpful. Good luck on your project. The first thing I recommend is picking a light source because that will determine where your highlights and shadows go. The yellow paper represents the light source I chose. Next, use a pencil and draw lines to create sides on the larger gears. 
This will help the gear look 3D. The lines I'm drawing will reduce the size of the teeth, but this is an easier option than trying to alter the background. Burn in the sides of the gear so that they are darker than the top of the gear. Also, the sides need to be lighter in color than the background. Since this is a rustic gear, don't make perfect straight crisp edges on it. Keep some of the edges softer. I would add a dark shadow on the background next to the gear. Put the shadow on the side opposite of your light source. This will help the sides of the gear be visible and help the gear stand out from the background. Now one of your questions was whether or not the background should be light or dark. I personally would make the background dark. I'd even make it darker than it currently is by several shades. That is, unless your clock numbers and the clock arms are black metal. If that is the case, then I think a lighter background would help them stand out. But any other color, I think a darker background would look better. As for the rusty texture on the gear, I think you've done a fantastic job so far. I really like how this gear is looking. All I would do is add more texture. I would keep doing what you've done so far, so that you don't have any large bare spots. An arrow is pointing to a spot. And continue to keep your texture random. I would also increase the tonal variety of your burn marks as you're doing this. Remember when I said to make some of the gear edges soft? A way to do that is to burn tiny circular motion along the edge. This will give the gear an aged, weathered look. I would also add some cracks here and there. The cracks are just lines burned in a non-linear fashion. Think a bolt of lightning or something like that. Like everything else, I would create a variety of them. Make some barely noticeable and others plain to see. Vary how long and wide they are. If it is easier, draw them in with a pencil first, then burn over the ones you like and erase the ones you don't. Keep in mind it is up to you on how old or rusty you want the gear to look. Less texture will make it look newer. Lots of texture is going to make it look very old. If you feel like your gear is not standing out enough from the background, then that is a simple matter of just darkening up the background until the gear stands out more. With this gear on the left of the clock, I would add a cast shadow to help give it a 3D look and make it stand out a little more. Then it's up to you if you want to add more texture to it. For smooth metal, I first orient an example so that the highlights match the position of my light source. With this particular gear, I'm going to add the lines to give it a more 3D appearance. This is an optional step. I'm just showing you that it is possible and how it can be accomplished. Afterwards, I darken up the sides that I created. Like the other gear, the sides need to be lighter in color than the background. Then, mark your highlights. Use a white charcoal pencil to do this with. Place the highlights on your gear following the example that you choose. The white charcoal is used to mark the location of the highlights, making them easy to see and avoid. After the highlights are marked, then burn the gear to a uniform color, but avoid burning over the white charcoal. The charcoal can resist the heat of the pin tip, but it will not block it completely. Do your best to make that color as smooth as possible. The best advice I can give you in that regard is to use a light hand pressure. Also, don't turn the heat up too high. The higher the heat gets, the harder it is to control the burn results. How dark you make the gear is your choice. I would just make sure to keep the gear a couple of shades lighter in color than the background. After the gear is burned in, make sure to erase the white charcoal. 
Don't let the charcoal sit on the board for a prolonged period. It gets harder to erase the longer it sits, especially if it sits overnight. A reminder that if you feel the gears do not stand out enough from the background, then darken up the background. You can even create the impression of vague, distant gears by burning a basic gear shape in the background. If you do this, just make it slightly darker than the background, and it does not need to be a complete gear. With the cluster or group of gears near the center of the clock, work one gear at a time. I'd start with the top gear and work your way down the pile. With the top gear, I would make it look 3D and then add the highlights. Another thing to consider is that I think the top gear should be lightest in color. As you work your way down the pile of gears, each gear should get a couple of shades darker. Also, the amount of detail should decrease the further down the pile you get. It is up to you if you want all of the gears to be smooth metal or if you want some of them to be rusty. Another thing you can do is add a cast shadows. You can make this project as simple or as complex as you want it to be. Carrie, that is all I have for you. I hope the information is helpful. I'm sure your clock's going to turn out beautiful. Here's how the printout looked after I was done coloring in some of the gears and a little of the background. Well, that's it for this video. I hope the selected artist found my comments helpful. And for those of you who weren't selected, I hope that you were able to find some valuable information out of this video. And as I said before, if you would like to see more content like this, leave a comment and let me know. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you soon.